Hi, I'm Jason O'Dell, and in this instructional video, I'll be talking about how to use Nick Software's HDRFX Pro plugin with Capture NX2. You could also use this similar workflow for applying HDRFX Pro with any standalone uh, RAW converter that's not Lightroom, Aperture, or Photoshop. Now, you can use HDRFX Pro as a standalone application. And the reason for this is that Lightroom plugins are actually written as standalone applications. So if you load the Lightroom version of, say, HDRFX Pro, or any of the NIC plugins for that matter, you can launch them in a standalone manner. Now, I recommend if you're going to try this workflow, download the sample version of the software, the trial version, from nicksoftware.com. Install it and see if you can get this to work before you go out and buy it. Now, all these applications for the Lightroom and Aperture versions of the software require that you give it RGB images. So that's TIFFs or JPEGs. There's not going to be any front-end browser. The whole point of Lightroom is to act as the front-end browser. So if you're going to use this workflow, you're going to need to manually load your images into the, the application itself. And then the images will be saved as an RGB format, a flattened TIFF or a JPEG. So this workflow, uh, as with Lightroom, is not uh, non-destructive. You get a TIFF output that you can't go back and retone map. That being said, it actually works quite well, and it's a very good, viable solution for those people who use other RAW converters like Nikon's Capture NX2 to perform HDR tone mapping. Let me start off by describing the basic HDR workflow that we're going to do. I assume you'll have shot a series of images and exposure sequence. We're going to batch out 16-bit TIFFs using matching settings with Capture NX2 or in any RAW converter. Then we're going to launch the HDRFX Pro application in standalone mode. We'll load those TIFFs into HDRFX Pro and do our tone mapping. The last thing will be to save a TIFF and if you want to you can then open that TIFF up again in Capture NX2 or any other editing program to edit it further, sharpen it, whatever you might need to do. Okay, so I've opened up Capture NX2, and I've got my file browser open, and I'm looking at a bunch of images that I've taken as exposure series for HDR. And what I need to do is batch across identical settings to each of the images, and I'm going to export them out as TIFFs. So I'm going to start by opening up an image into Capture NX2, and I'm going to go over to the Develop section here and open the Camera Settings. If I need to change the white balance, I will, but I'm, I'm just going to use the embedded white balance. I'm going to change the picture control to neutral, and I'm going to set sharpening to zero. And then at this point, I've got settings that can work if you wanted to add any other global settings that you could, but I'm not going to do any kind of levels and curves or saturation adjustments at all. I just want to produce a flat image. So I'm going to go to my settings and select them and I'm going to say save adjustments and I want to make a preset I'm going to choose the picture control settings and pretty much that's everything in there and I'm going to save this as HDR preset and click OK now I can close the file I don't need to save it and I'm going to go back to the browser here's the sequence of images that I'm interested in I'm going to select all of them and then I'm going to right click, choose load adjustments, and my HDR preset. When it does that, it'll ask me if I want to replace the current settings. I'm going to say yes, and I get the processing queue dialog. I want to save these out as TIFF format, 16-bit embedding the ICC profile, and I'm going to close this when I'm done. So let me select a folder. I've created a folder in, in, my, um, in my main directory. It's called HDR TIFFs. I'm going to open that, and then I'm just going to click Start. So here I am in the Applications folder on my computer, 
and I've installed the Nick Software HDR Effects program in the Lightroom plugin and I can find the application in my folder called Nick Software. If you're on a Windows PC you might need to check to see where the, the file is installed. But I'm going to open this folder and you can see here's all my Lightroom plugins that I've got um, they, that are actually just applications. And what I can do now is just launch HDR Effects Pro. So when I do that it comes up and we get an empty window. So now that I've launched this, I can now go to the File menu and I'm going to choose Open Exposure Series. Here's my folder called HDR TIFFs that I just made and here are the five images that I put into that folder from Capture NX2. I'm going to select them and click Open. Now that I've loaded my image sequence into HDR Effects Pro, I'm ready to do my editing and tone mapping. So here's the default. I'm going to go over to the Custom Presets tab from the Preset Browser. And you can see under here, Imported Presets. Here are the 14 presets that come with my ebook, The Photographer's Guide to HDR Effects Pro. And these are the presets that you can download for free from my website that Tony Sweet and I came up with. I'm going to choose a preset style that I want. So I'm going to choose Artistic Interiors 3. And then I can go ahead and do the rest of my effects if I want. So if I want to add, say, a vignette effect, whatever I might want to do, add control points, I'm going to do this uh, in accordance with the way uh, HDR Effects Pro works. Once I'm happy with the image, I'm going to go click on my settings here really quickly. And I'm going to expand the image output settings just to make sure that I'm saving all files as 16-bit TIFFs. So this image is going to be tone mapped, saved as a 16-bit TIFF in the directory that I choose. So I'm going to click OK. And now to save the file, I go to Save Image As from the File menu. And I'll need to give it a name. So I'll give it a name, uh, Rusty Train or whatever you want to call it, .tiff, and you can save it in the same folder or a different folder, whatever you choose. So I'm going to go here, Rusty Train TIFF, click Save, and HDRFX Pro is going to export that image, and when it's done, you can quit the application. Okay, so I saved out my batch TIFFs, I tone mapped the TIFF file, and I saved that file as rustytrain.tiff. So now I'm back in Capture NX2 in my browser, and here's that file. I'm going to double click to open it, and it opens up in Capture NX2. Now, this is where I could do any additional processing if I wanted to, but at the least, what I can do is save, uh, add in a little bit of. Um, unsharp mask so let me just do a little bit of sharpening and you gotta be very careful when you're doing sharpening on tone mapped images because you can really easily overdo it so uh, start small and then uh, adjust as necessary and then what I want to do is save this file and I'm gonna save it as a NEF file okay so here's my folder again rustytrain.nef now just as a reminder this isn't going to make this magically into a raw file, but what it is going to do is it allows me to save the file in a format that's non-destructive. So I can come back and change my sharpening settings, or if I wanted to add maybe a little uh, color effects, tonal contrast, whatever I might want to do, I can come back to this master file and re-edit it. That way it doesn't uh, uh, destructively edit the image. And with that, you're essentially done.